of my older favorites, and it comes from a very different uh, tradition. This comes to us from India, traditional home of mystery. And let me explain that in India they have a very different magical tradition. They have uh, three different kinds of magicians. They have the fake hears, probably everybody's heard of those, sleep on uh, beds of nails, sometimes walk on burning coals, eat broken glass. They do these outrageous stunts to attract a crowd so that the, their relatives can go through the crowd asking for bakshish. They are beggars, essentially. The middle caste, oh, so they're part of the untouchable, the lowest castes in India. That's where they come from, the figures. The middle caste magicians in India are the Sampa. Lala. Sampa is the Hindi word for serpent. Lala means man. And these are the snake charmers with their baskets of cobras and their flutes. And they're not regarded as tricksters or entertainers as they might be here. They travel from village to village with their snakes and their baskets and their flutes. And they put on what we would recognize as a performance when they reach a new village. They do that in the marketplace. But it's a form of advertising. Maybe that's where the word marketing comes from. I'm not sure. But it lets the villagers, the townspeople, know that they are in town for a certain period of time. And their services are available while they're there. They're what we would probably regard as exterminators. They come into the home or the workplace to rid that area of any snakes that they can find. It's kind of like the Pied Piper of Hamlin. Uh, they seem to be very effective, very good at what they do. They don't get paid if they don't find any snakes. And the more snakes they find, the more they get paid. Uh, but just a word of warning, we have no documented cases. Uh, they, they always get paid, and they always found quite, find quite a few snakes. So be careful before you invite them in your homes. The highest caste magicians in India are the very famous Jadu Wala. Jadu is the Hindi word for magic. Wala, again, means man. And in India, they're not regarded as tricksters or entertainers as they might be here. They're regarded as Mahatma, great spirits, great souls, who have mastered Maya, the art of illusion, whose followers sometimes make long pilgrimages just uh, once in a lifetime just to experience, to witness the miracles and the mysteries of the Jadu Wala. As they perform, they always tell a kind of story. According to the Jadu Wala, there comes a time in everyone's life when his or her spirit becomes as fragile as a piece of thread. When that moment arrives, the spirit, like the thread, begins to break into its many strands. There's a part of the soul that has the capacity to love, but of course there's another part of the soul that has the capacity to hate. There's a part of the soul that knows anger, but a corresponding part of the soul that knows Part of the soul that knows great sorrow, but thank goodness there's a quarter of the soul that knows only happiness and joy. Now, according to the Jadawala, when the time has come, the spirit has broken into its many strands, and a great change takes place because a man or woman that is broken in spirit cannot survive. And so the body dies, and at the moment of death, according to the Jadawala, the pieces fly from the body to the far reaches of the universe, which they circle not just once, not just twice, but finally three times, until at last they come to rest, suspended in space at the very frontiers of the universe, where they will may remain perhaps for 100 years, perhaps for 1,000 years, perhaps even for 100,000 years. But, say the judge, there will come a day when the pieces, the strands, receive a call. Because on that day, the great wheel of karma will have turned full circle. Watch the pieces, the strands, as they receive their call.